good news that Jesus Christ paid the penalty for our sins when he died. How he died and why he died is very important. How he died is he died, you know, as the Lamb of God, crucified on the cross next to two, two thieves and two criminals. So he died a criminal's death. That's how he died. And why he died, he died, you know, um, to atone us from the sins that we have so um, badly committed against God, the Holy One of Israel. And we have sinned against God. And the Bible says no man um, is righteous. All of us have done wrong. And all of us need this salvation. All of us need forgiveness from God. Amen? Mm -hmm. And the only way we can be forgiven is, is if we believe in what is true about God. And what is true about God is that he truly loves us. And the evidence of his love is the cross and the death of Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, who did this because he loves us and because the Father um, wanted to pay for the price, wanted him to pay for our sins. Amen? Amen. And so we read in, in the scriptures, according to the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 7, we learn that on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, the Bible says, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. So on the first day of the week, the Bible says, was when the disciples came together to break bread. And we know the first day of the week in the, on the calendar would obviously be Sunday. Sunday morning is the first day of the week. And so Sunday morning, the disciples came together to break bread. That means to eat the Lord's Supper. Amen? Because of what the Lord's Supper um, represents. And we're going to look at that in a minute. And so we break bread on the first day of the week. But now, is that still an ongoing thing? Do we have to eat the Lord's Supper every Sunday, the first day of the week? Or is it just was it just a one-time thing? Well, to make sure... Let's go to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26, where the Bible says, For as often as you eat this bread, how often? The first day of the week. Now, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till Jesus comes. 1 Corinthians 11, 26. So, how often do you eat the Lord's Supper to break bread? On the first day of the week. Until when are we supposed to do that? You proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Until Jesus Christ returns. They were instructed and commanded to partake in the Lord's Supper on the first day of the week. And they were to continue this until the Lord Jesus himself is revealed from heaven a second time. Amen? Amen. And so today in the New Testament Church of Christ, we believe that because of these verses in the Bible, we continue in the Lord's Supper. Amen? And we take the Lord's Supper every Sunday, the first day of the week. That's how often. We take it every week, but on the first day of the week. And we, and we ought to continue to do this until Jesus Christ returns. Now, has Jesus returned? Of course not. And so, do we take the Lord's Supper on the first day of the week? Of course we must. Amen? And so we thank the Lord for this. Now, the Lord's Supper, there is a proper manner to take the Lord's Supper. Amen? And the proper manner to take the Lord's Supper is that the Lord ate and drank from one cup and one loaf of bread with his disciples and commanded them to do the same. Amen? And we can read that in the account of Luke um, chapter 22 from verses 15 through 18. Amen. And so um, Jesus ate and drank from one cup and they shared with from one loaf of bread. And we learn that the New Testament clearly teaches this also in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and even chapter 10 and chapter 11. The Bible just talks about partaking and sharing in the one loaf of, and in the one covenant that Jesus established. So let us do the same thing. Amen? Amen. 
So this morning we're going to break bread. So it is called breaking of bread, or to break bread, they came together. Now what does that mean? That means everybody is breaking a piece for themselves. Nobody is breaking bread for you. We come together. When the disciples came together to break bread, that's the picture. So we also want to have the same picture. The disciples don't come to, together to just eat pieces. No. The disciples came together to break bread. So when we come together, you cannot come and find pieces already broken. So you're not coming to break bread. You're just coming to eat pieces. That's not the image that the Bible paints. The Bible clearly says on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to do what? To break bread. So when we come together, you must be breaking bread for that verse to be alive today. For you to apply that verse, that would mean that when we come together as disciples or as believers or as Christians, we are coming together on the first day of the week, as often as on the first day of the week until the Lord Jesus comes to proclaim his death by breaking bread. Amen? So we break bread. Amen? So this is the bread that represents the body of Christ. The Christ um, Jesus who died for our sins and his body was broken and bruised for our transgressions. And when he was nailed to the cross with a broken body. Amen? Now we remember that body. And we proclaim that this is true. And we stand upon this fact. It's a sign. A clear sign to everyone. That when uh, spiritually and physically we are saying that yes we believe this. And we stand upon this. And we proclaim that he did die every time. We partake in the Lord's Supper. Amen? And this bread, this one bread that we all share from, represents the one body of Christ. Amen? And that's the body of Christ. And so the body of Christ, we all want to partake of it this morning. And we all share from the same piece of bread. And we break bread. So let us break bread. Amen? In remembrance of what Jesus did for us when he, his body was broken. So let us bless the bread. Amen? Everybody understands this? Before we do this, um, I would like to also um, advise um, um, everyone that the Lord's Supper is, 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 is sacred. It's a holy um, um, communion. It's a, it's a holy, um, 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 you know, um, how can I put it? It's, 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 it's something that we must be careful on how we, we partake of, you know? We must partake of the Lord's Supper in a manner that's worthy. And don't partake of the Lord's Supper in a way that is not worthy. Don't dishonor the body of Christ. We must discern the meaning of the Lord's Supper. When we eat the Lord's Supper, we are remembering Jesus. And it's a memorial service. Amen? And so, if you have not been baptized as a believer, we're talking about an adult baptism. If, you're, if you've not been baptized into Christ, into the death, burial, and resurrection, which is the gospel, he died for us and he was buried and he resurrected from the dead. So if you've not been baptized, you know, according to, to what the Bible teaches in 1 Corinthians 15, um, verses 3 and 4, and Romans um, chapter 6, verses three and four, if you've not been baptized into Christ, um, then I would advise you not to take the Lord's Supper because that would be, you are not, you have never partaken in the death of Christ, yet you are trying to proclaim the death of Christ, but you yourself, you know, do not even um, um, honor that fact. Amen? So you are not a believer. So how can you want to do this if you're not really a believer? So. Let us um, discern the body of Christ. Amen? Amen? Okay, so let us bless the, um, the bread in the Lord's Son. <clears throat> Thank you, Father God, for this wonderful opportunity that we may worship you, that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. May God bless the bread of the Lord's Supper as we all partake and break bread in memory of Jesus Christ to partake in the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, take the uh, put the put it on your lap and um, use both hands to break a piece and pass it on. Children are not allowed to eat. Anybody who has not been baptized into Christ are not allowed to eat the Lord's Supper. Amen. 
So this is only for people who understand the meaning of the body of Christ, who understand, you know, uh, what it means. It's a memorial service you're proclaiming the death of the Lord. So when you are taking, when you eat the Lord's Supper, you break a piece, you eat, and you pass it on. And when you do this, remember why Jesus, how Jesus died and why he died. Amen? Amen. 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 Now let us um, share in the Lord's, um, in the cup of blessing. Now this cup has 100% um, grape juice, contains 100% grape juice, which represents, um, this cup represents the New Testament, Jesus says, the new covenant, which is in his blood. Amen. Purchased in his blood. So the blood of Christ paid the price for our sins to bring us into a new covenant with God. Amen? So now when we drink and share from this same cup, this one cup, we are sharing in the one new covenant, the new testament of Jesus Christ purchased in his blood. Amen? Amen. So when you drink the cup of blessing, remember that in his death, Jesus shed his blood for our sins to be washed away so that we can be forgiven by God today and so that one day we can be in heaven when we die or when Jesus returns. We never know when he comes. Amen? Amen. But we want to be ready. So when that happens, we therefore are drinking together in the one cup to partake in the one new covenant in the blood of Christ. So when you drink the Lord's of, um, the, the cup of blessing, remember um, the death of Christ and that he shed his blood. Amen? Amen. To give us the one cup, the new covenant. So let us bless the cup of blessing. <clears throat> Bow your hands and let's pray. <clears throat> Thank you, Father God, for the cup of blessing. May the Lord bless this cup that we share in the Lord's Supper. May God bless the cup that represents the New Testament, the new covenant in the blood of Christ, as we proclaim the Lord's death until it comes. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Just a, a moment of silence for the Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. We thank God. So let us get our songbooks and prepare to sing a song.